The time is currently 7.30 a.m. Let's see how long it takes somebody who's never built a trailer in a box to build one. Right here we have all the frame rails. Pretty simple. A little bit of hardware in there, I see. I'm just laying out all my parts so I can see what it came with. And when I need a part, I'll just grab one. Kind of recommend doing that for any project. So you can see what you have. And this trailer came with a bunch of loose bolts, nuts and bolts in the box. This bag was open when it arrived. This is the uh, Harbor Freight 1720 pound folding trailer. This is the only one I could get brand new from Harbor Freight. The 1195 pound rated trailer is uh, hard to find right now. I paid $550. Okay, going over some of the parts that were sent. We've got some carriage bolts. We've got hex bolts of different sizes and a ton of these little lock washers. We've uh, got a wiring harness, two lights, some reflectors, light brackets, a tag mount, leaf springs, two of those, two fenders. I think once it's folded in a garage, you put these wheels on and um, you can move it around your garage. We're not going to use those since we're building a micro camper. You've got these 2x4 supports, so if you use this as a utility trailer, I'm not going to use those. They go in these spots, and basically all they do is hold the bottom of a 2x4. got attaching chain, and we got the receiver. For tools, you'll need a ratchet. 3 quarter inch or 19 millimeter socket and wrench, 11 16 or 17 millimeter socket and wrench, 11 millimeter socket, needle nose pliers, small hammer, 3 8 inch impact driver, adjustable wrench, zip ties, and a sandwich, a drink, and some patience. So the owner's manual comes with pretty elaborate drawings. Each uh, thing is numbered each piece and laid out pretty nicely in these drawings. Here in the directions it says lay out the cross members and they have numbers. Uh, front cross member 39. None of the cross members came labeled. What I'm calling the cross member is the center supports that attach to the side rails. The side rails were labeled with a sticker. Right away on the first part I noticed that this says front left on the first frame rail, so that's a, a really nice guide mark for laying this thing out. Front right. And we have the axle. Roughly going to get in there. This will be the last part out of the box. Now I'm going to go over the directions a little bit to see the length of bolt that I'm going to use for each hole. It's 7.48, the time is ticking. In areas of the trailer assembly where you're passing a bolt through two layers of metal, use one of the shorter bolts. In areas where you're passing a bolt through three layers of metal, you use the longer supplied bolts. Basically, I'm just looking at the pictures. Now that I've got my bolts and nuts sorted, looks like it's pretty rinse and repeat. So the instructions show that you build the first little section with the top up, now you flip the trailer over and then it's easier to do all the little parts on the bottom where the axle are and the leaf springs. That's what I'm going to do now is flip the front section, put the tongue on and start building it that way. Also this trailer does fold so you can put it up in a garage like that. But I'm thinking ahead a little bit and uh, since this is going to be a micro camper trailer I'm going to try to take the fold out of it and just build it solid as one unit. I don't need it to fold.
Okay, and then we'll get the top part later. This area takes a longer bowl. Because you're going through one, two, three slabs of metal. Some of these top bolts I'm going to put in once I flip it back over just to make life a little easier. And now we're going to work on trying to make it a solid mount without the adjuster plates or the pivot plates here. Normally they go upside down like this. Uh, like so, like so. So you get like this on the trailer, bolted like that. It'll work like that. But since we're not going to fold this trailer, we're going to just leave this part out and solid mount it. Now I'm going to work on attaching the leaf spring bracket in the solid mounted position. Okay, those bolts and holes are lining up. So we have a square hole here which indicates a carriage bolt's going to be going in. Nice carriage bolt. Another square hole should indicate the same. And one of our longer bolts. If you're building the trailer to keep the fold feature, don't bolt the leaf spring holder to the rear half of the trailer at this step. It's 8.56. I've been at it an hour and a half. I stopped to eat breakfast too. Connection. That's our frame assembly. Now let's do the leaf springs. And this part with the U swoop is uh, going towards the rear. Use the long bolts with the three quarter inch head to install your leaf springs. So now it looks like I've made it to a point where I can tighten some bolts down, go through the trailer, make sure it's assembled correctly, and then I'll get back to working on the axle. Okay, so I'm using a frame and square to go on the edges since everything's loose to make sure that it's uh, nice and square when I uh, tighten everything down. Go back here. Okay, so I just went around and kind of got it. I'm going to double check. I don't need to really film all the double checking. The carriage bolts, they could use a deeper well socket. Some of the bolts are going to have to be tightened by a wrench just because of the proximity of other things. But uh, we're going to get the bottom tightened up, flip this thing over, do the top. It's 9.30, just crossed the two hour mark. Now we're putting the axle on. You'll notice this nipple here on the leaf spring and it's this hole on the axle. Just make sure you got those on there. All right, that feels seated. Whoops, and then that one wasn't. Let's get that seated. All right, she's in there now. 
So pop the U joints on, or uh, U bolts, excuse me. This plate has a hole in the center, and underneath the leaf spring is a hole uh, where it's bolted together. So we'll just have to make sure that it's lined up properly. All right, let's install the wheels. The axle's tight now. So just gotta pop this cap off so we can screw the uh, axle nut on. I'm using a real thin tip screwdriver. Seems to work pretty good. There we go, got the bearing. So, then this just pops on here. So we'll get a washer, nut, tighten that puppy up. Alright, so it seems like you can go a little bit too much to where the wheel ain't free spinning. We back up, take some pressure off that bearing. bit more. There we go. Cotter pin keeps that nut from coming off. There we go. Alright, cap back on and that one's uh, it's done. Okay, let's go across the top and uh, tighten everything down. Put all the bolts in. If you think ahead at this step, what you can do is get your plywood laid out, drill bolt holes and put the plywood on now. Okay, as in my other micro camper here, I put the, I do like a little cheating thing here with these Harbor Freight trailers. And I didn't put this trailer together, but I did move the receiver down into the middle of the frame, like this. Instead of being on top of the frame, like uh, the direction show. And what that does is allow a car, which is lower than a truck, to pull this trailer, how would you say, more level so that nothing's squatting and nothing isn't riding weird with the front end up or the back end up. This really helped with my uh, Saab car. Uh, if I put this up top, then the front of the trailer would squat too much and um, it wouldn't ride level. Now that we got the trailer flipped over top side, continue assembly of the tongue here. This is the normal mounting position. Basically, it's four bolts. It's going to go bolt, bolt. There we go. And then I have to tighten the six sets on the bottom. We're going to put this plate up here and do those four. That's how I do the tongue on these things. It, it works a lot better for the height of a car. If you have a truck, you can uh, put it on top of here. At this point, use two of the longer bolts to mount the safety chains to the coupler. Refer to the manual for the correct top mounted installation. Okay, got those uh, bolts in. Now we're just going to tighten that top plate down. 
To install the lights, bolt the small L-shaped bracket to the frame, then use two 11 millimeter nuts to attach the lights to the bracket. That was a real easy light assembly and they're color coded wires on each end. Kind of see in the bag here that they sit. You got color coded wires so you can't mess up on this side. You got yellow and brown on that side. You got green and brown and white. Uh, both sides have a white. Now we just run them to the front and on the back side of the lights there, let's see. Right here on the back side there's a marking that says top so you kind of can't go wrong. Um, of course you can always go wrong though. <laughs> So I'm going to run some wires up to the front, just going to use some zip ties and go around the frame and uh, not make it overly complicated. The wiring kit that comes with these trailers has a plug for your car, it's the short end, and it has a really long set of wires. So that's what those guys look like. Okay, up here on the front I left a length that's long enough to reach my car. My car is already wired. This white is a ground wire. The yellow and brown are going to run back to this side of the trailer and match with the colors on the light. And the green and brown are going to go to the other side of the trailer. And up front, I used duct tape and strapped around here so it won't move back and forth. I left the length long enough for the car. And we'll just use enough that's sufficient to hold the wire nicely. Normally, I'd like to have some zip ties. Just don't have any. You can use anything. Anybody ever tells you there's one way to do something, don't listen to them. Okay, so we've got our wires coming out the back here of the light. This white one being ground. We got green and brown coming off the front of the trailer. So I'm just gonna cut a little length here. Oh, I just remembered. The kit comes with uh, these blue things here, which just allow you to tie right in much, much easier. So we can take this guy and send it through here, even though I just cut that green one, and then send this green one through here. There's a little piece of metal in there that you squeeze down and it makes contact with both, both pieces of copper going through there. You can also use wire nuts if you happen to have them. I do have them, but I just wanted to show you this option. All right. Shoot the other brown one through. If you know your color as well, this will be an easy thing for you. So we got brown through, we got brown through. Clamp her down, crimp it shut. I had to drill a small hole in the frame and attach the ground wire with a screw to make sure there was good metal contact. I tried bolting the ground wire to the lighting bracket, but the paint blocked the ground wire from grounding properly and the lights wouldn't work correctly. The tag plate can be bolted to the back of this and it just hangs down like that. Actually more like that it seems. And maybe even above it. That'll work there. I'm going to take that off and bolt it. So the assembly of this Harper Freight trailer took me three hours and 45 minutes. I stopped once for breakfast and I stopped once for um, a bathroom break to go get something to drink once. Didn't go over the directions that thoroughly. So I made a bunch of mistakes that you guys can not have to make since I made them for you. The directions are really good. I highly suggest using them. Okay, so I went ahead and put the fenders on anyway. It's just uh, four bolts on each side. You've got your fender support top two right here. Here's your fender support. And they mount underneath this, inside of this channel under here. And there's two nuts that I put in right there where my finger is. So the fenders are on. They're kind of flimsy, but they work. They do the job. If I've provided value in this video, please consider subscribing and liking it. Your support motivates me to build more cool things. We'll see you when I get on the uh, micro camper build. Thanks for watching.